Hi, I'm Om, and I'm talking to... Scott Yara, President and Co-Founder of Greenplum. What is Greenplum? Greenplum is a database software company focused on solving uh, internet scale big data problems. Who do you sell to? We sell to large internet companies, uh, telecommunication, financial services companies like the New York Stock Exchange, like NASDAQ, like Reliance Communications and Skype and others are using our database to store and analyze hundreds of terabytes of data. So I thought that problem was fixed by Oracle and the problem was not inside the enterprise but more on the internet. How does you know, how's Greenplum different from Oracle? Sure, it's a great question. Uh, Oracle and the rest of the database companies for the last 30 years have been really focused on solving a problem that's called online transaction processing. So the first wave of enterprise applications were about building things like banking applications or HR systems and things like that. Uh, and so it's barely been optimized to solve that. And the internet scale problems today uh, have to deal with solving huge data problems where uh, people want to analyze all the clickstream events coming off of MySpace.com or Skype or LinkedIn. Uh, they want to analyze all the calls on a network uh, or the financial trades in a big exchange. And the existing database systems uh, were not designed to scale like that. And so what the break Breakthrough Greenplum has done is figured out a way to, to build a database system that will scale across hundreds to thousands of commodity servers and use a traditional internet scaling uh, MPP approach to uh, dividing and breaking up the tasks. So tell me why this is important in a sense. Why can't Oracle do it or why can't we just you know keep doing this with like Postgres sure. or, or MySQL? Sure. And, like, and how exactly do you guys do it if you can tell me a little bit sure. about that. So the, the, I think the key difference or the key breakthrough is um, that the existing database systems today including MySQL uh, use what's called a shared disk, shared memory uh, approach, it's sort of called shared everything. And for traditional transaction processing applications, that's sort of the right computational model. Um, uh, the internals of the Greenplum database uses a, an MPP shared nothing approach. So we actually physically distribute the data across thousands of uh, processor cores. Um, and the unit of parallelism allows you to move the processing closer to where the data is. So this is an entirely different architectural model than the existing database systems that have been going on today. So would it be safe to say that most of the processing is done on separate devices and the storage is attached to those processors instead of doing fiber channel Absolutely. or storage area networks. So it's direct attached storage. Correct which is very different than network attached storage. That's absolutely it. And so as a result of that, you get faster performance. Absolutely. Now, what if you replaced that direct attached uh, storage with, with, you know. EMC? No, with, you know, faster, let's say, oh. flash memory. Solid state. Solid state memory. Sure. Yeah, I think solid state actually is getting to be at a level of maturity and price points where it's going to be pretty disruptive. I think that, um, you know, spinning media is always going to be a valuable form of storage um, and people will just be able to figure out the trade-off and benefits. I mean you have terabyte drives today that are spinning at over 10,000 RPMs and, um, and are, are very very cost effective and so when people want to build and we're working with customers that want to build petabyte scale database systems I mean they have they're generating 20 to 40 terabytes of clickstream events every day and they want to analyze two years of data so how do you do that? Um, and it's really been a scaling model it's been pretty popularized by Google obviously I think <clears throat> they've shown that um, traditional data management techniques sort of, sort of fundamentally break down at a certain level of scale. And so Google's had to go and build their own stack you know, based on GFS and Bigtable and MapReduce. And I think what Greenplum represents is sort of that next class of commercial database systems that give the same kinds of scaling principles that Google has in their data center and sort of bringing that to traditional businesses so they can do it themselves. And Google has its own infrastructure, they right? Do. So they have their own yep. data storage model. And Correct. So how does your uh, this thing look like sure. you know, so compared to them? Sure. <clears throat> so uh, Google has um, uh, a number of things. One is a globally distributed file system called GFS. Um, and then they have a parallel uh, programming and execution framework that they've uh, really sort of helped popularize called MapReduce. Um, and it basically allows uh, their average developers to write programs in Perl and Python and C and Java. And as long as they follow the MapReduce uh, paradigm, they get parallel execution for free. Um, and Greenplum is the same way, we're a, a, a sort of 
massively distributed database system. So you can store and manage huge amounts of data. Um, primarily, the, the main interface to our system today has been SQL. Um, and that's because there's an existing market for big relational databases. But we actually just announced last week uh, the first kind of native interface to MapReduce. So that in Greenplum now, you can really use uh, the computing model that Google has in a very similar way. We can process huge volumes of unstructured data, huge volumes of text. People can write programs in Perl or Python or the language of their choice, and they don't have to be restricted by uh, sort of the SQL and declarative language of programming. Um, and I think that's going to be a really popular thing. I think the, the big problems people are trying to solve is how do they leverage all these cheap computers? Right? You can buy four socket quad core machines, 16 core computers today that cost less than $10,000. And so it's within the realm of every startup to a big company now to build computing clusters that have hundreds to thousands of cores very cheap. The question is you really need software that will give you that kind of scaling. So we announced last week as a part of our MapReduce announcement that LinkedIn uh, is using the Greenplum database technology. So as a consumer, when you log into LinkedIn, uh, they'll have um, services that now seem really valuable or self-intuitive, uh, recommending people that you might know. And so LinkedIn, as a powerful or you know, successful social network, has got about 30 million, I think, uh, end users in the social graph. But that explodes to well over a billion connection pairs. And so to offer even a simple service to a consumer about inferring the kinds of people that you might know based on the connection patterns of the graph is a actually fairly complex computational problem to be solved. And it's only one that can be solved with massive parallelism. So LinkedIn actually uh, uses the Greenplum database today to crunch, crunch through those numbers to provide new services like that. So to your point about the real-time web or the contextual web, it's all based on being able to sift through huge amounts of data that's coming back in, in, in terms of the user interaction and user content from the from the customers. I mean, you know, from that perspective, I have to say the, the so-called Web 2.0 is pretty lame. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. there is more personalization on the Yahoo homepage than it is in in, in whether it's Facebook or yeah. LinkedIn, and they're, it's, they're actually pretty slow. Yeah. And they, it's not that they're cheap on infrastructure, they spend a lot of money. They're just not very good. Yeah. I mean, so why is that? And like, when do you think oh, that issue gets resolved? I mean, some of you, I mean, if you work with New York Stock Exchange, I think you have the scale. So like, when do you think, you know, LinkedIn gets better? In terms well, I think LinkedIn's already, um starting to get pretty impressive. I mean, no, I man, I just used it this morning. <laughs> it sucked. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's a great service, yeah. but it's slow. Yeah, no, I think it's, well, I think there's, uh, whether the site service is, is slow or fast or the kinds of information they're providing back. I think, um, you know, mining the graph is something that Yahoo actually can't do. They don't have a social graph, and they maybe have an inferred graph. Um, but I think the kinds of analytics that will come out of a LinkedIn or a Facebook or MySpace will actually be quite different than the other ones. Um, but that's something that I think t until today, you know, Google's really been one of the only companies that have had the, the computational capabilities or the parallel processing capabilities to really do interesting things. I mean, PageRank um, was entirely done using Google's sort of scaling model. So once these companies catch up, I mean, I think over the next six to 12 months, you're going to start to see all kinds of personalization services that you haven't seen before. Last question. Sure. When does, when do you guys start to take down Teradata? That's a great question. I would argue we already are. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, are you hurting them? You time? know, we're we're kind of focused on a different market. I think they, they have an existing installed base that they do well. But the growth market, to your point, caused by Web 2.0 and caused by network computing, is causing all these companies to rethink what they're doing with data. Um, and it's those new applications that I think we're having a lot of success with. Maybe we, you should do a free install for the, you know, uh, uh, our, uh, uh, you know, economic legislators because I think they take way too long to analyze data to <laughs> have any real-time economic uh, impact. So perhaps something like this would help them. I'm offering it up right here. All right, there you go. <laughs> Thanks, Scott, Thank for you. spending time with uh, me. This is Om from Giga. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks.